I know you like oh, hats. I love the hat. Oh, you just happened to bring one I of your hats. I just happened to bring yeah. my favorite hat. W would you like to model that for us? Oh, yeah, I'll put it on. Okay. It probably won't look good with this hair, dude, but you can see a little bit of it. Oh. Can you see it? Wow, George. You like it? Have you ever worn that to the Derby? Yes. Oh, you have? Mm -hmm. oh, I love it. I have. Yeah. You like it? But Frank have... Olive designed this Who hat. Who did? Frank Olive. Oh, yeah. He's a great hat designer. Yeah. Yeah. But you have, you have, how many hats do you have now? You, you still wear hats a lot, uh -huh. don't you? I've kept all of his hats because they're kind of museum mm -hmm, pieces. Mm -hmm. And I guess I've got about 15 hats. Now, you've been, you, you married um, D. Irving Long, right? Mm -hmm. And you had three children. That's right. Lucy, Dennis, and Clay. And, um, and then you, how long have you been at The Voice? The Voice About TV. 25 years. 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's look at a few more pictures while All we, right. we'll, we'll, before we run out of time. All right. Uh, we're we're going to have to go back down. This is down in Mississippi, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's show this one first. Oh, that man <laughs> wrote a book on dieting, and they made me pose with him at the office because so, they didn't have a model. So obviously, you didn't take this uh, this picture, but that's you. That is I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you. Uh, He's measuring your your weight. Then. Measuring he didn't my have to waistline. Go on the diet then. Not then. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. Now, and I like this one too. <coughs> Th this is you, isn't it? Yes, and that's my first child, Lucy. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you. I took a picture of her with her son in that same pose and kind of the same clothes. D do I have a, pic a copy of that here? Or no, I didn't. I, did? oh. I didn't bring it with me. I was going to say I'd show that if I. <coughs> if I I did. I'm not, I wasn't sure. And uh, while, while we're doing the pictures, let's do, let's do another one here. <laughs> I like this one. Well, I was in the Junior League style show, and I wore Elizabeth Taylor's actual costume from Cleopatra, which weighed <laughs> 40 pounds. And uh, Clay went with me to Stewart's, and when they took that picture, he wanted to be in the picture. So that's my son, Clay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Cleo, Cleopatra had a son named Clay, but uh, well, she said if she... <laughs> If she's, <laughs> if she's a Kentucky Cleopatra, she does, doesn't she? That's right. I met her when she came. Uh, uh, now, these are and that's your the, children a little bit later. That's Lucy on her wedding day, and Clay is my son in the middle, and that's Kate, my daughter on the left, mm -hmm. Kate Blodgett. Mm -hmm. It's my daughter with Dr. William Blodgett. Yeah. He was your second husband, right? Okay. Now this, this, well, let's see. All right. And this is my little grandson at the circus with my daughter, Kate, and she has a wig on because she had lost her hair due to chemotherapy. But she's, it, she's well now, and it's grown back. Oh, and all my good. readers prayed for her yeah. and got her well for me. Very good. Yeah. Now, the last one I want to show here. Well, actually, this is, not the, this is the next to last, uh -huh. the penultimate, not All the right. ultimate. Okay. Because this is one of your favorite That's my favorite rest. picture. Yeah. I ju I, it was taken at the greenhouse mm -hmm. by Helen Corbett, a famous chef for the greenhouse. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, I, I, like, I like this. You know, I guess everyone has a favorite I guess photograph so. of I himself guess so. or herself. And now this, <laughs> this has to be one of your favorites. Your well, that's John Y. Brown Sr. when his son was governor. And that was taken the night that um, the... Con Kentucky Center for the Arts open, mm -hmm. and they had a big party at the mansion for everybody. And, and you were co were you covering it for The Voice then? Yes. Well, you had a kind of inside track, didn't you? Oh, I had an inside track. Really, wasn't fair to those reporters. <laughs> but life isn't fair. Life isn't fair. You <laughs> take right. advantage of all the breaks that you that's can get. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. See, not everybody was going to college back when you were going to college. You know, maybe in your family. So, so that's <laughs> another. You had a you had an advantage there, didn't you? Yes, I guess I did. You, you certainly <laughs> did. Um, I know that your career as a journalist and as a photographer during that time, you have. You have interviewed and photographed many, many, many different people, from Andy Warhol to uh, Claire Booth Luce, uh, Harlan San Colonel Sanders, Harlan Sanders. Um, you, you've, you've met all sorts of people. That's at right. The, the courier parties. sent me to the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Now, you didn't get to, uh, you, you weren't presented to the Queen, were you? No, but, but I you, saw her. I was saw right across. Did you take a picture? Yes, I was sitting on the uh, stand right across from Westminster Abbey, right on the end. Yeah. And so I took a lot of pictures of her as she got in and out of her carnation. 
Well, how did you meet all these people? Through networking of some sort? What we would call today networking? I don't know how I met all those people. Well, you, you know a lot of hostesses <coughs> in Kentucky. You, oh, yes, you know, Anita I did. Yes. And, and Mrs. Uh, uh, Whitney. Mary Lou Whitney. The way I met Mary Lou, she had her dollhouse here for the Derby. And <coughs> I was supposed to go over to Lexington and interview her about the dollhouse. And the ice was so bad that I couldn't drive over there. And she said, come Monday. And I was having surgery Monday, so that was Saturday. So I said, well, Mary Lou, I've never belonged to the jet set, but I'm jetting over to Lexington. <laughs> and I rented a plane Did and you? went to see her. <laughs> and we were friends ever since. Uh, well, so she's introduced me yeah. here a lot. Uh, <laughs> you know, you have a, a, a boldness and a daring that I think has uh, has been an asset throughout your life as, as, a, as a human being and as well as a, as a journalist. Uh, I remember you, you wrote somewhere that uh, you went to the opening of the Ritz-Carlton in, in, uh, in Chicago <laughs> <laughs> as a reporter for the, the Voice. Well, I heard they were opening and I heard it was very exclusive and so just for fun, I called up the Ritz-Carlton in Chicago and I said, my name's Lucy Blodgett, and I work for the Voice of St. Matthews, and I want to come up to the opening of the Ritz. And the woman was from the South, uh, and she uh, thought that was the funniest thing she ever heard. So she invited me up there. Uh, and I stayed two days and did everything. How much did it cost you? It cost me $5. $5. The bill was $5. <laughs> Probably some phone yeah. call I made. <laughs> and you ordered, uh, what, kangaroo tail oh, soup? Oh, well, they, they bragged that they had room service night and day. Uh -huh. And that you could order anything in the world any time of the day or night. So I put in an order for kangaroo tail soup. That was on the menu. Uh -huh. At 4 o'clock in the morning. So at 4 o'clock in the morning, this big rap came on the door, and I'd forgotten about it. I went to the door, and this distinguished man had the <laughs> kangaroo tail soup, copy the Chicago Herald Tribune, and he, and he had uh, a rose on the plate. And I tried to tip him, and he got mad. Uh, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lucy, you, <laughs> your life has been fabulous. <laughs> fabulous is well, the word. Well, it has. Fabulous. <laughs> because you are a little zany, let's face it. Oh, I'm just but myself. But you're yourself, that's, and that's the way you should be. Uh, you know, you're going to have to write your autobiography. Our time is up, but you're going to have to write your autobiography. You must do it. And, and I've got a title for you. What? Triumphs and Tragedies, The Confessions of a Southern Belle. Well, that's good. That's a good title. That's a good now, title. Now, I've done my job. That's a good you title. You do yours. That's you write the book. Will you, will you think about it? I think I'll call it Constantly Startled by the Obvious. Well, if you like your title better than mine, that's okay. You, <laughs> you, you, you may. You may do so. I know that you have loved living in Louisville. I you have. love the arts community here. I have. You love the people. I and have. and um, we're, we're so glad that you came up from Mississippi. That's so sweet of you, Wade. You're so thoughtful and nice. I appreciate that. And I, and I want to thank you for being who you are and for enriching so many lives with, with joy. Well, thank you so much. My guest has been social columnist uh, Lucy Blodgett. I'm Wade Hall. <laughs> Our cousin Albert Lily Becker, son of William Becker, and uh, we wanted to ask Albert a few things about our family to get him on record. Uh, he has a lot of information that we don't have. Well, the, uh, starting at the beginning, uh, Pierre Becker, the original immigrant, yeah, that's what I wanted to know a little from, bit about Pierre. Uh, he was born in Framing, which is right on the border between uh, uh, Lorraine in France and Germany. Right. And uh, he was a, he was born 1814, 1815. He served in the French army and he was 29 years old when he came uh, to the United States. Uh, he had money, it wasn't money that they left, but I think the political differences, and I believe that there was uh, since the French and the Germans were always fighting and they were right on the border, I believe that uh, mm -hmm. that's why he came out. Uncle Ferd used to say that uh, when he read Desiree and uh, the trial, which was the one where they tried the Jewish French soldier, 
that uh, he left because of the politics in the army uh, and because of this that he recognized what, uh, how these things happened. And, uh, he knew it. But he came over when he was 29 years old. Now, the only record I can find, I know that when he came over was uh, 1842, 43, and uh, that he, uh, when he came over, uh, the only record I can find of a Pierre Becker coming on that date was that he had two family members who were not named. But anyway, he settled in New Orleans, and there he married Marguerite Braun. And he had, by Marguerite Braun, he had uh, two, possibly three, uh, children before she died. And after she died, uh, they were Catherine Becker, who was the one I was telling you about yesterday, mm -hmm. that uh, a toffle, one of her descendants, came by and gave me the dope on uh, when they were born. Oh. And she was married here in Brookhaven on the 7th of February, uh, 1871, to a guy named Turney. And they are descended from that one. They also had a son named Michael. And Michael was killed in the Civil War. But this was, uh, uh, she had died before then. What uh, uh, unit do you have any idea who Michael was with? I've, no, I've, I've been trying to find this, and I haven't been able to get it. I've got to go up to Jackson because they've got a Michael Becker than we have. Yes. Look him up, okay. Now, there's another Michael Becker. The uh, family came to Brookhaven. In 1858 with the railroad, John McGrath and Pierre Becker both came to Brookhaven at that time. Papi, our grandfather, was born in Jackson, Louisiana in 1856, and he came with the family. He was four years old oh. at that time. Well, now, what, when did he marry Ms. Huber? She's not a Huber. Uh, that I haven't been able to find out just when, but I know that she was, uh, I believe, she married them uh, uh, around, oh, uh, 1848, somewhere thereabouts. In, in New Orleans? Uh, uh, in, in, I don't know whether they were married in New Orleans or Jackson, Louisiana. They were living in Jackson, Louisiana, and okay. that's where Papi was born. Okay, and she was, uh, Susanna was, was totally German, right? Very Germanic, uh, according to Uncle Well, again, Jay. living right on the border. She yeah. a Hoover. Yeah, right. And the Hoover were, was a German name, but again, they were uh, Beckers and Hoovers living on both sides of the border sure. at that time. And whether, uh, but I know that uh, the story they tell about Susanna Hoover is that when she read something in a local local newspaper, she didn't believe it until she read the yeah, Cincinnati I, paper that I, was in German. I got that uh, through a yeah, letter that, that, I, that Uncle Jamie had written to Tupper when he was uh, researching the Dream family. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And the other thing was is that uh, uh, all of the children were not very much in favor of their grandmother because she insisted she wanted them to study languages, and she wanted them to study a lot more than they felt like studying. <laughs> so as far as they were concerned, she was the one sitting down. Sound and like uh, what to sound do. like a lot of the Beckers uh, yeah. come along since then. <laughs> <laughs> and mommy apparently Irish and was uh, she let the children do what they wanted to, and uh, so the, the grandmother was the stern presence in the family when they came. So, so Papi, so, there, there was another uh, Becker who came to, uh, lived in Brookhaven in, in the census of 1860, which I have here, shows uh, Peter Baker, this is the spelling, but he was uh, Pierre Becker, he was born uh, 46 years old uh, from France, and oh. Susan, they said she was from France also, so the, that, that was a Hoover uh, right. daughter. And if they had uh, children, they had uh, Catherine, Kate, 16 years old, born in Louisiana, and uh, I, I think that's the one that was uh, born of uh, uh, Marguerite Brown. Okay. And then Michael Becker, also uh, Marguerite Brown, and then you, uh, he was 14, and you skipped down four years. And then there's Peter Becker, who I'm pretty sure was uh, Susanna Hoover's son, and uh, Barbara Becker, who was the first, uh, first person buried in the Catholic cemetery. If you go look at our, uh, the big thing there, you'll see her name there, Barbara Becker. She died at the age of 16. Oh. Uh, and uh, she was, uh, and then there was uh, Susan uh, and Ferdinand, that's Papi. Right. 
and then Lena Becker. Lena Becker is married to a man named Ramsey. Now, Susan Becker, I, I don't uh, haven't got any great dope on when she uh, uh -huh. uh, came. But uh, I believe that this 10-year break between 14 and 10 was where uh, Marguerite Braun died and, and uh, Susanna Huber became the wife. Hmm. Also, uh, in 1860, there was uh, Pierre Becker's brother Michael, Mitchell he was called. Oh, okay. And he was a farmer. He came from France. He was married to a, I don't know the last name, Barbara was his wife's name. They had four children. Felix, Catherine, uh, Peter, and Barbara. So, and, and where did he live? He, he lived in a farm. The family had a farm out, uh, well, here in Brookhaven, if you go out where the Zetas Road crosses I-55, yeah. that's where the farm was located. Oh, be nice. I never knew that. And they uh, uh, came along uh, with it. And I wonder, I don't know of any of Michael Becker's descendants around here. I guess they didn't no, stay they around. No, they were all in New Orleans. Now, oh, okay. it, on Poppy's uh, golden wedding anniversary, they came up. Oh. Yeah, there were two of them who came up uh, uh, to the uh, the uh, uh, wedding there. Terrific. And he died in this thing that Jackie's talking about that Susan, that McLaughlin wrote all the things in the papers. Tells about when uh, Michael died and that Poppy had gone down to his funeral uh, uh, in New Orleans. Oh, okay. Uh, wherever that was. I, I did read about that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, uh, Barbara, as they say, died when she was 16 years old. She was the uh, uh, buried in the first first person buried in the Catholic cemetery. And uh, Barbara also, they used to tell stories about how during the Civil War, they, all of the families of silver and things like this, they, she hid it under a bustle to get it out to, to keep the, uh, the, the occupation was a very harsh occupation. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had something valuable in the house that was liable to go north pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the stories that they would tell about her. Uh, she was a very beautiful woman. From all I understand, also, and she was she was his daughter. She was Pierre's daughter. Yeah, probably the first child from Susanna Huber. Uh, it was the second. Second. Peter was the, Peter was the first. You see, he was ten and she was nine. This okay. was just one year between these two, which makes me think that uh, oh, right. uh, the the, uh, the break was would not have died between the two. I see. The children were sort of scattered a year or two years down the mm -hmm. line, uh, but there's this four-year gap. And this okay. is where I believe the uh, the change came. Although I have not, I, I found out uh, where Marguerite Braun is buried, and uh, the fact that she did have the Catherine and Mike, Michael were her uh, children, but I haven't been able to find out just when she died. Did Michael make it through the Civil War? Uh, no, he didn't. Now, now the, the, the the Mitchell died. Michael didn't. Mike, Michael was killed during the Civil War. Okay. Now, uh, whether he died of disease or whether he was killed in battle, I yeah. don't know, but he was uh, of the right age. And he was, uh, and I don't know the unit that he was serving mm -hmm. with. Would have been a unit probably out of Louisiana. No, they, they were living in Mississippi at the time. Oh, the See, they came to Brookhaven in 1858. Oh, okay. And the Civil War started oh, in 1861. Yeah. So uh, uh, they were here at the time. Well, I've got I've got a book that I can look that up in. Yeah, uh, I've got Dunbar Rowland's Military History of Mississippi. Yeah, and I've been doing a little research of that, so I'll check that. Well, out. I hope you can if you find it. I oh, I'll, I'll definitely, know I'll definitely get it to you. Yeah. Uh, do we know much about what uh, Pierre Becker did? You know what, as yes. far as yes. his occupation. When he first came over, he was a miller in in France from the village of Framing. He was born in Belmont. And we have his passport uh, that uh, has what he looked like. He was uh, uh, five foot five inches tall, fair complexion, noble brow, pleasing. You know, they were, the French used to describe people instead of fingerprints. They would describe their facial characteristics and uh -huh. their physical characteristics, so you could, could recognize it by that. But uh, Bill had Mike has the uh, uh, a copy. Uh, that Bill had facts. You know, when uh, Mommy died, they divided the family effects up by giving each thing a number and having people pull numbers out of the hat. 
and what they pulled out was what they got. Uh, what uh, uh, my dad father got was a passport. He got a big grandfather clock that they had and these bookcases which were joined together in one. Mama had them cut apart because he didn't have a place to put the social yeah. circular one. Uh -huh. But, these, but these he, were, got, he got Pierre Becker's passport? Yeah. Now William Henry had this. Uh, it was very dim and he, when he was in Washington after the war, he took it over to the Library of Congress and asked them how to get it, uh, the, you know, the old printing brought out. Bring it up to speed. Huh? And then had it Xeroxed and sent each of the, each of the brothers a uh, copy of it. Oh, neat. Now, uh, who got the first copy, I don't know. Mike got Cleavy's copy, and William Henry has the uh, original. Oh. And it was passport number one issued by the town of Framing in uh, well, I'll ask Mike about that. Well, he, he can show it to you. Oh, he had, uh, uh, Jane may have it because Jane came over, and uh, uh, she may have taken it over to uh, Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg. Okay. But, uh, I had it here, and I copied uh, all of the things off of it, and I, I want to make They also had an English translation, which is not that good. I, I checked with the librarian here, who is a Frenchman, and mm -hmm. got a better translation of the thing than is on the, uh, uh, Mike had a great big frame and he had the it's 11 by 14 uh, uh, Xerox of the original one on this side mm -hmm. and then a translation on this side. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I gave Jane the better translation which she was going to get fixed and I wanted to type it. I started on it but I am a terrible putter offer and I haven't got to the time around to do it. So, uh, Pierre was a was a miller. Yeah, that's what that, that's what's listed on his passport. Okay, and also says that he's an outstanding citizen. And mm -hmm. they issued him this interior passport, good for one year, to travel in France from uh, Framing to uh, a Le Havre, the port mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, from which I presume that he sailed for America. And did he land at New Orleans, or do you think he landed uh, at Savannah? Charleston? Uh, I think he probably landed uh, uh, in New York, uh, okay. but he might have come to New Orleans.